Good evening. So part two of my videos on Nix and Rix. So if you haven't seen the video from two weeks ago, I highly recommend you watch it first because you're not going to understand anything if you're just starting with this one. So I will link it in the description. So last week I talked about the Nix package manager and how it allowed you to install software and why that would be useful for users of the R programming language. I also at the end of the video, quickly mentioned the Rix package that uh, I've started working on uh, with Philip Baumann, which is a package uh, for R, which should make it easier, much easier, to use the Nix package manager to create um, project-specific development environments. So, basically, for each of your projects, you can have one specific version of R with a specific set of packages, a specific library. So tonight we're going to use that, we're going to use Rix to illustrate uh, how to do this to run an old project. So in this case we're going to run an old project. Maybe in the next video I will show you how you can start a new project using Rix, but it will basically be the same, the same idea, the same approach. So first of all I want to show you that this is my uh, Emacs uh, session running R4 3.1. And as you see, the BLAS and LAPAC uh, libraries are installed, were installed using Nix. So they are, you see, the path is in the Nix store. So again, if you don't understand, if you're not following, watch the video from two weeks ago, which should make things clearer. So uh, I've also already loaded the Rix package version 0.1.2. And I'm going to resurrect, let's say, or rerun an old project. So. This old project is a project that I wrote to illustrate how to build um, reproducible analytical pipelines with R for my book. By the way, a word from our sponsor. The sponsor is, is me. I'm the sponsor of this video. So this is the book I wrote. You can read it for free online. Uh, but if you prefer paper, you can buy it from Amazon. You see it's in this big... What is happening with this one? I don't know. It's This one is a bit... Yeah, here it is. Um, anyways read it it's free uh, but if you prefer paper you can buy it from amazon and you can buy a drm free epub from linpub as well so this was the word from our sponsor anyways for the purposes of this book i to illustrate how you can build reproducible pipelines i wrote this code and here is the readme and this is the classical stuff that you can read from a readme that uses rnv to allow you so rnv is this package that allows you to restore uh, the library that was used at the time to develop the pipeline so i say here clone the clone the repository then you know check out the pipeline uh, branch and use rn restore to install the packages as they were at the time and then you can run the pipeline using target star make and you get your output at the end so the problem with this approach is that we are just here uh thing or we are just here solving one one tiny part of the whole reproducibility problem which is uh, restoring old packages, which is already quite good and quite important, but what is missing here is the right version of R. So if you see, if we look at the uh, lock file, we see that the R version that was current at the time was R422, and currently I have R431. So this generally is not too much of an issue, but it can be a problem. Um, so this can be a problem and uh, sometimes you want to restore, uh, this happened to me many times, I want to restore an old library using RF and it just doesn't work because of this version mismatch that happens. So one way to solve this issue is to use Docker because with Docker I could get an image with the right version of R and then restore the packages inside that Docker image and then run my pipeline inside the Docker image and this is actually what I show you to do in this book. So if you're interested Take a, take a look. But tonight we're not going to use Docker, we're going to use Nix. And the advantage of Nix is that it, the, it takes care of both the packages and the uh, version of R without using Docker nor RNF. So you use one tool. So with one tool you can replace these two other tools. And actually there are many other, many other advantages, but we are going to focus on these two ones. The advantage uh, as well um, is that you, your environment is specified or is described in a text file, so kind of like a, uh, a Docker file. And you can use then that, 
that description, that file, which we are going to generate here, I'm going to show you, you can then use that to regenerate, rebuild that environment anywhere, on a new computer or on the cloud, for example. Anyways, so what we are going to do here is I'm going to show you how you can use RICS to restore this thing. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to write, so le maybe let's take a look at the, um, at the files I have. So I'm in the folder, I have uh, my targets script, okay, which is my pipeline. I have my document that I want to compile, my RMD file. I have a folder with some functions that I wrote. So these are functions that I, I use to, uh, to simply run my analysis, the readme and then the log file, which you are not going to use. But it's still important because the log file, at least the log file, uh, even if I'm not going to use it to restore my library, I can at least see which version of R I should use, which is important for what's coming. So the other thing I wanted to check is I just want to check the targets uh, file because the targets file tells me which packages I need to install. Actually, there's not that many. There's just the targets package, the target types package and the housing package. What is the housing package? So this is not a package that you're going to find on CRAN. This is a package that I wrote for the purposes of this book. Um, first of all, to illustrate how you can create a package using the Fusen package, which is really nice. Um, and also because uh, this, if, if, you, if you package your code, the advantage is that you can make it, it makes it easier to test it, it makes it easier to document it, it makes it easier to share it. So this is a package that is only available on GitHub, uh, but this is not a problem. I can also use Nix to install it, and I'm going to show you why. So I need to install these three packages, and I need to install our version 4.2.2. So let's go. Let me just write a new script that I'm going to call, I don't know, generate env something like that. Uh, it's going to be an R script. And I'm going to load the Rix library, first of all. <coughs> and then I'm going just to look at the vignette, because the vignette is going to give me some sample code that I can just reuse. So I'm, going to, I'm just going to take this. All right. And I'm just going to paste this, and I'm going to adapt this a little bit. So first of all, the R version that I'm interested in is not the latest version, but is R for 2.2. The packages that I need are the targets package and the Tarsha types package. And I also need the housing package. Now, because housing is not a package that is available on CRAN, I cannot just write housing here. But it's a package that is available on GitHub. So I can define that as a list. I think I might even have it here in the vignette because this is also the package that I use to illustrate. So I don't need to go now on... Uh, yeah, here, here it is, installing packages from GitHub. Uh, so first of all, I can provide... A, if, if I need to install several packages from GitHub, I can provide them as a list of lists. So the, the, this defines one package and this defines another package. And then I just add everything inside a list and they all get installed. So I'm going to just copy and paste this and I'm going to, to explain to you where this comes from. So let me paste this here and let me remove this. There we are. So this is looking nice. Let me just do exactly. So first of all, the package name, it's called housing. So this is very simple. The repository URL, so this is where you find the package, so wrap for all. Uh, wrap for all is kind of the name uh, I gave to uh, the uh, one of the users that you will find in this book. Uh, wrap for reproducible analytical pipelines for all, because it's for everyone. The book is free for everyone. Um, the branch name is called Fusen, so why uh, this has nothing to do, well, Yes, it has something to do with the package Fusen. It's just that I build my housing package using the Fusen package, which I really recommend you check out. This is a package that makes it very easy to develop other packages. And so I called the branch name Fusen because I used Fusen to develop the package. But you could have called it, you know, if it's master, main, whatever, trunk, whatever people use, you can just put it there. And then, very important, the commit. So this is the commit of the package. So this is the state of the package that I want to install. So I want to install the package as it was as of that commit. And this is very important because, first of all, Nix needs that. But also, I think conceptually, it's very important for us 
because it's a way to ensure that uh, this will stay reproducible. So basically, um, whenever I'm going to regenerate this environment, using this commit, I know that I will get the exact version of the housing package, even if uh, the developer continues working of it, on it. Because if instead of commit, I add something like latest, then, you know, if I regenerate this environment in six months, if the developer worked on housing, then I, got, I will get that version that will be current in six months and not this exact version. And because I want this project to be reproducible, I wrote the exact commit that I need. And finally, my ID is not our studio, but other. So this, I, I, I think I will explain this in the next video because this is another whole thing, but there is this thing with our studio um, and Nix that is a bit specific. So I'm going to talk about about this in the next video, not this one, because this is a whole big topic. So because I'm using Emacs, I'm just typing other here. Uh, if you are not using any ID, so for example, if you just want to run this pipeline, like from the terminal or on the cloud or whatever, also you, you can just write uh, other here. Finally, I'm going to, for the path, I'm going to just use the current path that I'm on right now, which is, yeah, which is the housing path. Then I'm going to overwrite, but here there's nothing to overwrite because I haven't generate, generated the file yet. And I can also print the file on the console just to, to see what it looks like. So let's save it and let's run this. So I ran this in my terminal, so here it is. So as you see, the code ran, here is the code, and the, this is the output. So we see the output because print is true. So we see that a file got generated and we have here some explanatory text. And I'm going to open the file. It will, it will make it easier to, to understand what is going on. Uh, you see now that I have this default.nix file, which I didn't have before. This is the file that Rix generated for you. And this file is written in the Nix programming language. And as you see, if you've never seen the Nix programming language, it's maybe a, you know, a bit surprising. It's, uh, it looks complicated. And I, I don't want to say that it is complicated, but it's definitely something that you need to spend time to learn. So Nix, uh, or Rix, I should say, the package we wrote, will make the entry cost much lower. Because you can already start using it without necessarily be super comfortable with the Nix programming language. What Rix did is that it basically took, for example, my housing here, my, my housing uh, git package, and wrote all this lines of Nix code that are basically the instructions that Nix needs to install my package. Then here you find the two other packages that I need, right, targets and torch types. You find R here, so R itself needs to get installed. And by the way, it's going to be R4.2.2 because this is the version that I need and that I specified, right? If, if you take a look at the, the code I ran, which is here, I, I specified R42.2, and uh, this basically means that this revision, okay, this commit of Nix packages will get used. And this is done all automatically. So without Rix, you should be going online and you should be looking for the right Nix commit. This is now done automatically just for you. Uh, what is also done automatically, uh, it's this uh, SHA. 256 that gets you know generated so this is like um this is a hash um that gets generated by the nix package manager to ensure the integrity of the files that get downloaded uh without rix you should also be generating this by hand rix does that for you as well so this is i think quite nice all these um, packages that you see here these are all the dependencies from the housing package they also will get installed automatically so Nix will deal with that as well. And then, you know, we have a shell that get, that will get made, and I will explain what this is, but the shell gets built. And inside this shell, we will have uh, our Git packages, our R packages, and our system packages, the system package being R. Uh, if you need to install Quarto, this would go in there as well. If you need to install Git, which, etc., etc., all these like Linux utilities, uh, they would get in there as well. And then, the, we have also a shell hook. So the shell hook is a command that gets started automatically whenever you start this environment. So in this case, by default, the shell hook is R vanilla, which means that it's going to be R without like any startup scripts that get that get, that get run. 
So we have this expression, we have this default.nix file. Now we need to build uh, it. So to build it, I'm going to go inside a terminal and I'm going to use nix build. So nix build will build this uh, environment for us. It might take some time because it will need to download everything unless I have it in the cache already. Um, because Nix has a system of caches that, that can get used if I already have some of the packages, which I should, but we will see how long it's going to take. Um, if it's going to take long, uh, I will, I will, yeah, I think I will cut the video and I will, I will restart it then, uh, or maybe, let's see. Ah, it's done. Okay, so it, it just reused the, the cache. So now that I have um, this, okay, let's take a look. I have my default Nix file, I have my RMD, I have my functions, I have my script that I wrote to generate an environment, and now I have a result. So let's take a look at result. I think you can cat into result. Yeah, so result is basically this big thing that you're not going to read, but essentially it, 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 it's a symlink, okay, so it's a shortcut to the right uh, let's say output that got installed by, by Nix, okay? So now now, if I run nix shell, I'm going to drop into this environment. So let's see. Um, it might take a little bit of time, but not that much. And you see, I'm in R 4.2.2, which is the right version of R that I need. And I should have the possibility to simply do targets tar make. Let's see if this is going to work. Hopefully it will work because this is live and it's not going to work one uh rn yeah but but i don't i'm not using rn so oh yeah i know why i know why this is you know why i know why um the reason this is happening is because i cloned let's see you see this is i'm in the nix shell and i have wait a second this is actually good it's good that it's happening live i have this r profile so what happens here is that targets spawns a new r session and the, this new R session starts this R profile because this is what R profile is for. And if I cat into R profile, you will see it's it wants to source the activate.r uh, script. And this is needed for rnd, but I'm not using rnd. So I'm simply going to remove this R profile and I'm going to start R again. As you see, I'm in, or actually I should start, you see, I see this, this is because HTPGD. This is a package that gets loaded by my R profile, you know, but it's not in this environment. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to go back and I'm going to start R vanilla, which is actually the uh, shell hook that I have before. So now I'm the, in the clean environment. I'm just in this environment. I only have my packages. Actually, before even running anything, what I could also do is I could run which R and you see it's this R 4.2.2 from the Nix store, okay, which is not like any other, which is really that specific version of R that I need. So now finally I'm ready. So I'm R vanilla targets tar make and hopefully now it's going to run. So it looks like it's running. So this should build R markdown is required. So that's funny because I, I thought uh, that our markdown would get installed as a dependency of Tarsha types, but okay, fair enough. Actually, that's not so bad because I can show you now that I need to install our markdown, I just add it back here. I basically rerun this, which will generate a new default.nix. Let's take a look. Our markdown should be, yep, there it is, our markdown. So now let me go back to the terminal. I need to quit R. I also need to quit this shell. Uh, it's not quit, it's exit. So let's run nix build again. So this now will, will install our markdown in the, in the environment. So this is actually how you should do it. If you need to add packages, you just rerun the, the, the script from before and you just add them as you, as you need them. Okay. So now let's type nix shell. So I will be dropped in my R session and now hopefully it should work because this is starting to be embarrassing. So I'm talking, I'm talking big about my package and now it's like not working. But I li literally did not try running this before and I wanted to show you without any preparation how it works. 
and look at it beautiful it's running so not only is my targets pipeline now running it's running in the exact version of R that was used to build it at the time with the exact packages and now I should be able to open yeah maybe I need to open da -da, so here it is VUX housing there it is there it is yeah you know so this is the HTML file that was generated right now from my environment from my new fresh environment i don't know what's happening with emacs oh there it is so what have we learned we've learned that using ricks and using this simple code where you specify the version of r that you need where you specify the packages that you need be it cran packages or uh, git packages also by the way you can if you want and if you need you can write something like i need i don't know like ggplot 2 at version whatever version 2.0.0 this is also going to work so you can also install all the packages um, but you should avoid doing that the, the 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 best way is really to to like install the whole the whole environment if you need like ggplot 2 at version 2 install the environment with the r correct r version that was current at the time of ggplot 2 this is only really useful if you need like to install a package that does, that is not on CRAN anymore, but that was archived. So you can go in the archives and get that package, for example. So just write this and this, you run this code, it generates for you this default.nix, which is this big thing. Uh, and you don't like, it, 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 I mean, it's good if you take some time to try to understand it, try to learn a little bit of the Nix programming language is always good. But if you don't, you don't care. You just you just have this, right? And you just go into the terminal and you just run nix build. And terminal, it's going to build the environment for you. And then you just type nix shell and you're going to be dropped in the correct environment. And then you can run your commands as you want. So this is great for running this old project that you want to restore. But if you, if you need also to work interactively with uh, a new environment that you generate. Nix uh, is also great for that and Rix as well. And this will be the topic of the next video. Until then, have a nice evening. Check out my book. I will put a link on the, in the description where you can read it for free. But if you want to you know, send some money my way, you can also buy it. And that's, you know, is always appreciated. And um, if you also want to test Rix, please do because we are lacking some testers we we both work on linux so we we you know we have tested it on linux uh, but you know there's a lot of people that use windows that use mac os i i have like a, a hackintosh mac os uh, virtual machine going on but uh, yeah it would be great if people could test it also on real hardware so anyways thank you so much and yeah see you next time have a nice evening or day or whatever